نحمد صلی اللہ رسول الکریم ہم بعد از پریویسلی اناؤنسڈ ان شاء اللہ ویل بی اسٹارٹنگ دا سیریز آف مجالس آن دروس دروس آف اکمال شیم اے ویری فیمس بک اے ویری فیمس کنسیڈرڈ بک in the sub of Sufi circles. Its uh, literal meaning is perfection of morals. A uh, very nice English translation is, uh, has been published by uh, Majlis ulama of South Africa. They've translated it and published it. Uh, I strongly recommend if you can get hold of this book. Its author, Hazrat Sheikh Ibn Atawullah Sikandiri Rahmatullahi was born uh, on in the six uh, was born in 658 Hijri corresponding to 1259 in the English calendar and he passed away on 709 Hijri corresponding to 1310 according to the English calendar. A great Sufi. Let me just uh, go through and read to you the preface of this book and then inshallah we'll uh, read one of his malfoos and then explain it. It says, Iqmal Shiyam, Perfection of Morals, is a treatise It is for Mohibbeen. Who are the Mohibbeens? The lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although every Mohmin is a lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this treatise is largely directed to the attention of the Mohibbeen who are conscious of divine love. Nevertheless, as you know, Alhamdulillah, each Mohmin has love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then there are, though very few, amongst the Mu'mineen who consciously search and spend their lives in this endowment of achieving divine love. Nevertheless, nevertheless, it will benefit even the unconscious lovers by inducing in them some consciousness of the love lying dormant in the heart which have been created for the being Uh, for being the abode of the divine love. Whereas, you know, the heart has been basically created, the spiritual heart is a creation of Allah Ta'ala with the sole purpose for acquiring the love of Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala. As the mafum of the Hadith, you could see that nor can uh, this earth and sky, nor can uh, the universe fit me in them but I fit in the heart of the moment. The mafum is the meaning is not that actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in your heart but here's an indication that the spiritual spiritual heart has no limits and that is why the marfa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the part in which the marfa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can come is the spiritual heart without any limits since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is without limits. Since Iqmal Shim is a treatise for Mohibbeen, it speaks the language of love. Now here's something uh, written for the lovers. Naturally, then the terms, the perception, the dimension that would be addressed here would be the language of love and divine love. Thus the book abounds with the guidance, uh, sorry, Thus the book abounds with paradoxes and seemingly contradictory calls and cries sounded for the guidance of those who understand the language of Allah's love. The advices and prescriptions herein are balm for the souls searching the path of love leading to their beloved, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This book is not for the rational probing of a skeptic mind stunned by crass materialism 
while such a mind denuded of the uh, while such a mind denuded of divine illumination will be incapable of absorbing the treasures of ikmalishyam the heart basking in the warm uh, warmth of the divine love will readily comprehend and relish the wealth of guidance so necessary for the perfection of of morals a perfection without which the mohib the lover can never aspire to reach his beloved this was the priest phase of this book and today we'll start with one of his sayings which is actually the base of the sawaf let me read it to you then we'll go into the description it says paying attention to your spiritual ailments is better than turning your gaze in the direction of attaining things which are out of your sight other thing says o murid you are eager to discover hidden entities you are des- you desire to know of the divine mysteries secrets and subtleties you consider these entities to be the maqsood the objective or the intuc- or, or the introductory stage of the maqsood remember that to incline the heart in this direction and to pursue these hidden entities are not for your welfare in fact this attitude is harmful for you it is better for you to view your personal spiritual defects such as riya hasad takabbur etc and to concern yourself with their elimination if in the course of your spiritual journey some mystery, mysteries are revealed do not attach significance to them keep in mind that your purpose is the purification of your nafs from evil attributes the reason this fakir chose this particular malfuz was that this is the starting point of the sawaf the reason why we enter the suluk the reason why we go to a master the reason why we get bath usually there's a big misconception about sufism about the sawaf people consider this to be uh, something through which we'll be able to achieve kashf and karamats and uh, abnormal things like and success is considered to be like you know flying in the sky or walking on water or finding out what the other person thinks in his heart or get getting kashf that what's going to happen tomorrow although these things are absolutely of no value in your suluk in fact as hazrat ibn taula sekandi rahmulla says these things hinder your progress because to achieve achieve the divine love your focus your de- desire your intention your intention and your attention should be towards the one and only allah subhanahu wa taala and towards his love rather than seeking kashf and karamats which are usually a misconception that a large portion of salikins have in their mind that once we enter the suluk and we start doing muraqaba and we start doing zikr we'll start getting these visions and good dreams and so on and so forth and as uh, hazrat says here that in this cause if uh, in the course of your spiritual journey some mysteries mysteries are revealed i mean there are times when you uh, there is a kashf you get a vision or something of the sort what as they say that these are mahmood but not maqsood maybe uh, a means of a little encouragement for you and you find that you benefiting for your zikr but 
they are not maksood this is not what you desire this is not what you aim for this is not your target so it's best to just concentrate on what cleansing your akhlaq e razila as has says here what you, you we should in our spiritual uh, journey defects like riya showing off hasad uh, envy takabbur pride and it's it's best to concern yourself with the elimination of these akhlaq e razila because do you remember that allah subhanahu wa taala is pure and he only comes in the heart of those whose hearts are pure what meaning what there should be no contempt contempt contamination in the heart of ghair allah meaning ghair allah the love of other things than that of allah subhanahu wa taala meaning the love of the world no here let me again as uh, we also read in the maktubat of mujaddid of sani rahmatullah alay what uh, what do we mean by uh, dunya or the world or the love of the world anything which refrains you from the remembrance of allah taala subhana anything which refrains you from the obedience of allah subhana taala that is world not necessarily you may be having a lot of money or a lot of material wealth but as long as your heart is in, not in love with these things and these things do not hinder your obedience towards allah subhanahu wa taala these would not be considered uh, dunya or so the main purpose of entering this path is to cleanse yourself from your akhlaq e razila usually what happens is uh, it's, it's a common uh, sight many a salikin who enter the suluk and during the beginning especially once they start making zikr and alhamdulillah doing a long muragbas so at times they do get these visions during the muragba or they start having nice dreams uh, so what happens is usually they start getting distracted thinking that this is maksood this is the target if i am having good dreams and i i get to know what's going to happen tomorrow that means i've reached my goal that means now i've reached a very high station whereas in fact you when a salik starts thinking that he's reached the, his goal obviously you know, he thinks he's there so he stop his journey there and i've seen myself many a salikins they get lost in these kayfiyats and they progress halts and in fact then they are not talib e maula they become talib e kafiyat let me tell you a incident of uh, hazrat khalil ahmed saharanpuri rahmatullah alay the sheikh of hazrat maulana zakaria hazrat sheikh ul hadith maulana muhammad zakaria rahmatullah alay in his aap biti hazrat maulana zakaria rahmatullah alay writes that uh, this uh, story about when he was there in haramain with his sheikh maulana kareem and ahmed sahari saranpuri rahmatullah and lot of salikin from india at that time used to write letters to hazrat sheikh and uh, to hazrat khalil ahmed saranpuri rahmatullah informing him about their zikr about their mamlaats etc and uh, hazrat sheikh said that many a times there were lot of letters in which the salik used to tell hazrat uh, sahanpuri rahmatullah alay that hazrat when i make zikr i see heavens and i see stars and i see angels and so on so forth and such great kayfiyats uh, hazrat sheikh says that uh, i used to think that hazrat sahanpuri would tell me uh, zakaria write to him that now you have the ijaza and khilafa of the silsila instead hazrat sahanpuri used to tell me zakaria write to him to stop all nawafils to only do his farz and wajib and to stop all zikr and i used to be very surprised and i used to say hazrat uh, mashallah he has got such great kayfiyats and uh, you're asking him to stop his uh, extra ibadats so hazrat sahar new puri rahmatullah alay used to explain to him uh, that this man is becoming talib e kayfiyat instead of become talib instead of becoming talib e maula 
because a natural uh, resultant of zikr is many a times one uh, as the heart starts cleansing as the mirror of the heart starts being cleaned uh, at times one does see these things but many a time people are distracted by it and i've seen that many 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 people who especially get these kafiyats are more vulnerable to getting distracted and thus halting their progress and just like uh, and and people who usually don't have these kafiyats they just stick to their zikr askar and they just keep making on that zikr uh, for allah's raza and the result is that in the cleansing of these uh, akhlaq e razila such as riya and hasad and takabbur and anger the more they cleanse the more these things come under their control which is the target because the more one is uh, without these akhlaq e razila the more anwarats can come to his mind the one of to his heart so this is normally a very common misconception that salikins who enter this uh, path do remember as the first hadith of uh, sahi bukhari inna mal amalu bin niyat that your um amal depend on on your niyats on your intentions if your intention the amal may be great you you making namaz you doing dua you making doing tilawat now all these amals are absolutely great but in the inner heart if the purpose is riyakari to show off to people just you know your heart your uh, nafs tells you to show off to people that you such bahut nek aadmi ho you such a pious person mashallah you've been reading quran for 2 hours and you've been doing nafls for 2 hours wow and the basic niyat inside the heart inside your basic intention is to show off to people so instead of being uh, instead of getting ajr and reward in fact you'll be getting punished because all you're doing is not for allah subhanahu wa taala you're doing it for your own nafs so here <coughs> as hazrat sikandari rahmanullah says that we need to pay attention keep not only pay but we need to continuously we should be paying attention to our spiritual ailments rather than looking in the uh, direction of attaining kash and karamats and seeing the future there are no limits to the purity of your intentions and do remember the weightage of each amal depends on your intention a very famous of uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that uh, ummati of the future who, who makes a donation a sadqa of gold as much equivalent to that of the whole ma- uh, mount of ohad as you know ohad is the mountain near madina munawwara it's i think 7 kilometers long so a ummati who makes a future ummati who makes donation of gold equivalent to the weight of ohad would be less in weightage compared to one sa of khujur let's say 1 or 2 kilo or whatever whatever exact a sa is one sa of khujur given in sadqa in the name of allah by a sahabi of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be carrying more weight than the whole mount of ohud ohud equivalent given in gold in sadqa by a future ummati now if you see with a mantaki mind with a logical mind uh, isn't it strange that the value obviously of like one or two kilo of dates 
I mean, there'd be like 100 riyals per kilo. So we're talking about what, 200 or 300 riyals? Okay. Uh, and uh, at the same time, if you've got uh, tons and thousands and thousands and thousands of tons of gold, which would be valued, you know, in money terms, much, much, much more, there'll be billions of riyals, most probably, or trillions of riyals. So how come the ajar, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of that one sa khujur sadka is more, or would be given more from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared to the amount of gold of uh, Mount uh, Uhud. What's the difference? The difference is, the, is in the ikhlas. The difference is in the purity of the heart of the giver. Now, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala ana ajma'een but the fair Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa company in one moment, the station, the ruhaniyat, the cleansing of the heart with the barqa of the nigah and soba of the Rasulullah what they achieved, that can never be achieved by anybody else who comes, who has come after the Prophet wasallam and not uh, attained his soba or has not seen him or met him in Iman. To the extent that Uwesi Karni Rahmatullah Ale, no, he is uh, the highest Tabi'in. Ulama Karam says he has the highest level after the Sahaba. After the Sahaba, he has the highest maqam amongst Tabi'in. But he does, his, his maqam is nowhere near the Sahabas. Why? So he has another point as well. As I think uh, Mawlana Rum or Sheikh Sadi says, Yak zamana sohbate ba'awliya, Beter asat sala ta'ati beriya. One moment in the company of the awliya is better than 100 years of nafli beriya, nafli ibadat, which is also without showing off. So it's, it's very pure, but still, the company of the pious, and who is more pious than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Whose company would be more affected, effective than the company of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? So undoubtedly, here's another point as well that we get that we should try to spend as much time, avail as many opportunities that we can to spend time in the company of Aliyah Karam, the pious people who have gone through the path of cleansing themselves of material love whose hearts have become uh, who become uh, filled with uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pure love take you now do remember a sahabi is not someone who necessarily needs to talk to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi it's just someone who just visited Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the halat when maybe not even seen like, uh, I, if I remember correctly, Hazrat Abdullah bin Makhtoum, I think, who was a blind Sahabi, although he did not physically see, but he was in the company, he was a Sahabi, he was in the company of Rasulullah Sassam, and he had, in the Halat of Iman, so his, his maqam is that of a Sahabi. And that proximity, that closeness, that companionship of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, elevated him to that great position of a sahabi which otherwise no one can now attain no matter how many ibadats we make no matter how many nawafils we pray we can never attain the maqam of a sahabi again what was the uh, outstanding point of these sahabas if you uh, with, you know learn about their lives with the barqa and the fail of Rasulullah sallallahu Alhamdulillah, their hearts had been cleansed. Now, uh, we'll go a little back and uh, what we read here, we'll see what, what basically the Quran has to say about it. Uh, Surah Juma, uh, the second ayat of Surah Juma. I'll just read the translation. It gives the four purposes of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam being sent to this world. 
and the translation is that he it is who hath sent among the unlettered ummi meaning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent the ummi prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one who was was amongst the people uh, one a messenger of their own mean to recite unto them his god which means allah's revelation what one that means the purpose of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam coming to the world was one to recite unto the sahabas his allah's revelations and the second was to make them grow and to teach them the scripture third was to teach them uh, scriptures and the fourth was wisdom now the third uh, as he says to make them grow what does this mean this means that uh, to sanctify them taskiya nafs and what do we mean by taskiya nafs no this is ordained by the quran this is one of the purpose for which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent and what does taskiya nafs means cleansing the nafs what does the what are the negative traits of the nafs as here mentioned by hazrat ataullah sikandar rahmatullahi alaihi riya hasad envy showing off greed anger pride for any salik this is what his objective should be and do remember this can be only achieved by the adherence of the sharia of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam no way has the success criteria been mentioned as uh, no way does it say that you've got to have kashf and karamats to reach the uh, station of, of walaya but to reach the station of the walaya you need to be pure in your zahir and pure in your batin meaning what your zahir also has to be in sync with the sharia and your batin also has to be in sync with the sharia the things in our batin which stops us from being in sync with the sharia and which results in fact our zahir also going astray is our negative traits for example greed or envy that is what makes us think negative about our brothers uh, it is the greed the love for the world uh, that we would not hesitate to usurp somebody else's rights or somebody else's land or somebody else's money so what happens if your patin is unpure automatically your zahir also becomes unpure in fact many a times your batin may appear to be a uh, zahir may be uh, may appear to be impure but since your batin is impure the result is that you do not progress in fact you are degressing you're coming down so it is essential it is essential that all of us who are traveling this path from day 1 to the last day should be cognizance of the fact that our sole purpose is to cleanse ourselves of these akhraq e razila to reach from the nafs amara point to nafs lamana ulawama and eventually nafs e mutmainna purify our hearts to the level of nafs e mutmainna then only can we claim to be the lovers of allah subhanahu wa taala may allah pak give us uh, the strength the tawfiq to cleanse ourselves of all these negative traits of the nafs we do muraqaba for a couple of minutes for this close your eyes and think in your heart the spiritual heart is on your left side two fingers below the left nipple towards your shoulder at that point just just think 
that the noor of the zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the heart of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and from there through our mashayikh in, in my heart and my heart is being cleansed from all impurities and it says Allah, Allah, Allah. Breathe normally. Keep your body absolutely uh, in a rested position. And you're not saying Allah, Allah in your head. Allah, Allah is being set in the heart. And you just focused on that point, you point, you just attentive towards that point. Amin 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 ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا ولم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وكنا عذاب النار وكنا عذاب القبر وكنا عذاب الحشر وكنا عذاب الميزان سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين